Cranberry Wilderness, West Virginia. I said I'd go down south for one more warmer weather trip. And now we got snow. <laughs> Good morning everybody, Syntax 77 here and well let me tell you where here is. We are in the lovely state of West Virginia. It is early October as you can tell by the change in the leaves starting to go on here and we are in a specific area called the Cranberry Wilderness which I've been looking forward to checking out for. Uh, I've been, it's been on my radar for a couple years and I finally came down here. It's in the larger area of the uh, Monongahela National Forest, which is, if anybody saw our Dolly Sods video from last October, it's a little south of that. It's a little less known, it's a little smaller, um, but it's supposed to be beautiful, very secluded, and <laughs> great for stargazing, which is how I originally came upon it. And I can tell you, when I got here last night in the old V-dub, um, regular routine, drove up after work, got here around midnight, after a seven and a half hour drive. Very pretty seven and a half hour drive though. Anyway, got here and uh, it was so dark. I turned those headlights off, interior lights off in the car. And I mean, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. It was insane. So um, we are gonna be uh, definitely, hopefully as long as the clouds stay clear, um, we should be seeing some nice sights, whether it be leaves or stars or just wilderness. So, yeah, let's go on over here to the car here, get myself together. Uh, I got three days out here, two nights, um, some, some gear laid out here, my pack. I've made some notable changes to it for this trip, which we'll get into once we get going. But um, I've been creeping up towards around 13, even 14 pounds for this, especially in the cooler weather. Um, I got it down to around 10 pounds, and that's by uh, changing the hammock up. I switched from a, probably a three plus pound system down to a one pound hammock system and i um, really excited as well about a new tarp I got which is peeking out just a little bit here. A Kuban fiber tarp from Hammock Gear. It's, uh, it weighs under six ounces for the tarp with the lines and everything it's uh, around eight ounces and that's compared to my previous tarp that was like a pound and a half. So it's got me down to like 10 pounds. Kind of excited about that. Um, we'll get into all that as we go. And also it's been a while since I've made a full what's in my pack video. So I'm gonna make a companion video. So if you really want to see everything in the pack, I will do a separate video. I'll link it right up here and uh, you can check that out and I'll break everything down for you. So that'll save us some time. We'll just get ourselves on the trail here. You can check that video out if you want. But yeah, for right now, I'm just gonna be uh, finishing off my Red Bull, a couple Pop-Tarts, stretching my back out from sleeping in the car here. Some people ask, why do you sleep in the car? Why not just throw your hammock up? Um, yeah, I totally could have. There's some spots over here. But uh, just to answer that question, a lot of times it's just I get here after seven to ten hours driving my car's not that bad i just put the seat back and i catch some sleep and then the next morning i'm ready to go really quick so that's kind of why i do that plus in a lot of areas for legal reasons you're not supposed to sleep that close to the road or the trailhead so that's uh that's why i just go ahead and catch a little nap in the car gps as usual uh comes to mind since that's sitting there my uh, Garmin will be recording the whole time. I'll be recording waypoints as I go, and you can download those on my website if you want. Which brings up another quick note about uh, electronics. My cell phone died last night at least an hour and a half before I even got here. No cell service whatsoever. So uh, just something to look out for if you're coming out here. Make those last calls to loved ones uh, probably about two hours before you get here. Um, luckily, I do have a spot messenger, which is great. I just sent a message when I got here. Um, this is pre-programmed to say this is where I'm staying for tonight, so my wife knew that I was parked up and safe. So that's kind of nice. All right. Uh, there's my front pack full of camera gear. That's not in my base weight. I mean, most normal people don't go out with all that junk, so I kind of leave that off the base weight. But I probably got about four at least four pounds of batteries and camera gear so that I can share this experience with you. You can see I got my little map printout there. I found that on the internet and I highlighted kind of a route 
that we may or may not take. I'm going to kind of play it by ear. We're parked right here, Forest Road 150 at the north-south trailhead. And we might take the north-south trail. Actually, I know we'll take that first along the bottom here. And then I have some options. I can go a big outer loop. I can kind of snake my way in here, do some backtracking. I could use all these side trails. It's a nice little network of trails. It's not the hugest area compared to other, you know, some other places out there. So making a giant loop um, is a little tough. But I might be able to push up to a 30 mile loop if I'm feeling really ambitious or if I just want to chill out. I, I might do you know a 20 mile loop a 15 mile loop i don't know we'll see the pack's light so we uh hopefully should have the energy to do whatever we want we want we want we want all right all geared up cars all locked up we are ready to hit the road wait what am i talking about right across the road looking both ways before we go safety first and hit the trail all right north south trailhead right here Check it out. This will take us towards North Fork Trail, Tumbling Rock Trail, a whole lot of other goodness. So, into the woods we go. See a nice ground covering of leaves right from the gate. Trail this way, apparently. Nice to be back down south. Did a decent amount of trips. My last couple trips up north which I love, but when it's time to just chill and relax, always like to come down south. And the last two trips up north were pretty high, high mileage, steep elevation gains, and uh, now it's just kind of time to chill out. We got a little info thing back here. Tucked back a uh, 75 yards. Welcome. Be a responsible hiker, control your pet, waste disposal. All kinds of good tips there. General area map, which we saw on my uh, paper map. Trail descriptions, I got a copy of those with me as well. And even a little more detail than that that I got from the Forest Service in my pocket. And uh, Horse use is not encouraged in the Cranberry Wilderness. No bikes. So there you go. Caution. Some portions of County Line Trail and District Line Trail, which I believe I may be doing on the way back if I do things as I slightly have planned to do, may be challenging to follow. It's recommended all hikers on these two trails use topo maps. Got that. Compass, got that. GPS, got that. These are wilderness trails, so no blazes are used to mark the trails. Please read bulletin boards. All right, there you go. It looks like towards the end of the hike, when I'm completing my loop, um, might be a little hard to follow. Looks like we're already coming up on our first little junction here. Scenic Highway, that's where we came from. North, south, keep going this way. Looks like this intersection is a North Fork Trail. So I think I'll be there's a good chance I'll be coming back along this to link up towards the car on day three. But you can see it's a nice flat grade so far. Definitely got a lot of this moss going on and uh, it's moss covered rocks, coniferous trees mixed with deciduous. It's just uh, very beautiful so far. Well, it certainly has its dense sections, that is for sure, to push through. Uh, it really kind of alternates between these kind of flat, open, mossy areas, and then just kind of really dense rhododendron and fun stuff to push through. Just kind of alternating back and forth between those two kind of feels kind of cool all right it's uh, about 9 30 ish got on the trail a little after eight about three and a quarter miles in 
not a whole lot of uphill yet so we're making good time actually just kind of discovered a nice little potential campsite here would probably be good for hammocks you might be able to get a single person tent in here but uh, I won't be stopping here it's a little early I'm just gonna have a snack and some water but I will drop a GPS pin for anybody interested in a trail that's only about or a campsite that's only a few miles in uh, the regs here actually that brings up a good point um, or topic uh, not a whole lot of actual regulations down here um, more like suggestions um, like for instance you saw back there eh, we discourage horses not really a regulation against it but we discourage it um, there's no actual reg I could find um, about the distance from the trail for campsites but um, they did say right on the official brochure it just says we suggest 200 feet away so I'd say just use your discretion you know don't be right on the trail find some spots kind of tucked back like this you know I don't know that this is necessarily actually 200 feet from the trail a little ways over there but it's still pretty nice so I'm seeing some good opportunities along the way where you can just kind of pull over and camp so it's uh, it's pretty cool it does remind me a little bit of Dolly Sods um, since we're in that same general kind of region. Um, um, but it's nice that you can kind of just kind of pull off and throw up a little tent site or hammock and you're good. No need for a permit or anything like that. Just be responsible and have fun. 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 I think we're finally starting to get some elevation gain here. As we make our way up through here sun is starting to poke through and hit those nice yellow leaves up there. A couple obstacles to hop over of course, which is par for the course in uh, wilderness areas. But yeah, finally starting to work those legs a little bit. Get a little bit uh, sunnier too. And as we get up here, it's a little bit higher up elevation. Starting to see some even more abundance of clearer spots for uh, campsites and whatnot. Not a whole lot of views um, going on so far as far as like, you know, like long distance vistas. A lot of nice wood views, but not a lot of views off the ridge or anything like that. But I am having fun just kind of going around and uh, mapping the area and dropping pins and just doing dorky stuff like that and kind of soaking in all the ferns and everything but uh yeah if you do this trail as you get further up here there are definitely some cool sections that would be really easy to set up camp I would believe I'll tell you one thing I haven't seen yet though is water sources which is fine because I'm carrying a comfortable amount but just as a heads up that was about five miles in back there great campsite but definitely bring your own water at least from what I can see and it is October, you know, dry, dry season. It might be a little different in the summer, although I haven't even really seen any dry creek beds going up to that point. So um, if you're going to go up there, definitely bring some fluids and play it safe because I have not seen any opportunity to fill up my bottles yet. We are starting to go back down now, though, so maybe, uh, maybe I'll be able to fill up in a little bit. little over six miles in tumbling rock trail goes down that way but we're going to continue on the north south trail just a little bit longer towards uh, I think the Laurel Lee branch trail and at that point I think I'm gonna cut to the right gain some elevation and see if we can't find a campsite for tonight eventually another thing I've noticed so far there are definitely times where you're gonna <laughs> or at least I'm wondering Am I really on the trail? But, uh, yeah, it's a little trampled down. I'm thinking I'm going in the right direction. The leaves coming down are pretty. But, um, yeah, definitely grown in in some spots. You feel pretty immersed in the Cranberry Wilderness, at least on this north-south trail in a lot of sections. All right, a little junction action. Let's see, this should be Larley Branch. Yes, it is Larley Branch Trail, which should cross a little stream, aptly named 
Laura Lee branch that um, I'll probably get some water from. At this point, uh, let me check my GPS. Going on nine miles. And it's about 12.15, so I want to get some lunch soon. I'm thinking get up to, hopefully that water source is running. Get up to that, and um, I have enough water for lunch, but it's always nice just to get some, you know, free water, if you will, and uh, cook some ramen noodles and just kind of chill out and see what I do for the rest of the day. All right, you can see, got a little bit of standing water here. It's trickling a tiny bit. It is October. Um, according to my map, we crossed this trail, or I'm sorry, the trail crosses this stream three times. This is the first time, but I'm going to go ahead and just uh, take it from here. I don't know if it's flowing better up there or not, but you can see it's standing, but simple solution for that with my Sawyer squeeze system here. Um, unlike a pump, I can't dip right into it, but not the end of the world. I've got here very virtually weightless, very lightweight, um, it's a 16 ounce water bottle that I've cut the bottom off of, and now it's basically just a little scoop. See the cap still on there. Whoops, just stepped in that water. Good thing I'm wearing these Gore-Tex shoes. And uh, I'm just gonna carefully, without stepping in the water again and kicking up a bunch of sediment, just pick that up and then pour it right in. Whoops, pour it right into my bag. Sometimes you can blow into these water bags and you can get them to open a little bit more for you. And it is possible to dip the water bag right in there. But this, uh, this, this will get you by in an even more dire situation where you have a really, a really small puddle. Uh, this thing will save the day. So, a little tip for you on a water scoop for the Sawyer bags. Well, it looks like the water's gonna taste a little bit like crawfish soup. Little shrimp ramen lunch, good stuff. Uh, cooked it up with the Esbit fuel. Uh, I actually thought this stuff here, these little little cubes. If you're not familiar, um, if you want to see the setup I'm using in more detail, just check out my Grafton loop video. I kind of show it in detail there. In fact, I actually brought them on that trip, just thinking something different, little experimentation different system and I figured I'd go back to alcohol stove after that but uh, I was packing up and it was just so convenient to just uh, count out my meals grab the right handful of cubes and head out the door so that's what I did definitely starting to hear some water in the distance getting closer and closer uh, perhaps we can find some little campsite along that. Uh, it's around 2.30 now. Crossed over to 13 mile mark, so, you know, my whole, maybe this whole loop will just be 15 miles for the three days. Uh, guess I kind of blew that off. Whoops. But, uh, the grades haven't been that bad, and I've been enjoying it, and it's good kind of deep woods sights and sounds so I've just been cruising along I don't I don't really feel that beat up at all um, which is to say a lot about how gentle the grade has been for the most part uh, to hit 13 miles and not feel that bad about it but uh, yeah at this point I'm ready to just look for camp I think that's enough progress and uh, sunsets closer to 7 or something like that so it'd be cool to have some time at camp but I think that's the plan Okay, now actually, this junction here, which doesn't have a sign on it that I can see, but 
according to my GPS, it does confirm that this should be the Middle Fork Trail. And if I take it down there, I can connect with Big Beachy and a couple other trails that I might want to do tomorrow. But if I backtrack up here, from what I've read, um, there should be some campsites available up here. But what I'm trying to do is, tonight should be the clearest night. Possible uh, clouds and thunderstorms tomorrow. So, I'm trying to find something with a little bit of exposed sky so I can see some star action tonight. And we've had a pretty decent canopy this whole time. But perhaps up here towards hell for certain branch, we'll find a little view of heaven. In fact, it didn't take long at all to see at least what I would say is some major potential over there. Trail goes up here. Small little campsite and firing there. But over here, the other side of the water there, I see a big old flat area and a nice break in the trees. So let's get across this thing and see what's actually over here. Oh yeah, that's a nice break right there to look up tonight. Water to get some hydration from. Yeah, we can do this. Definitely gonna do this. You see somebody put a big old cairn there to mark this, but I think it was kind of obvious when you saw the break coming around that bend. Big old wide open spot. You could have a whole compound here. Probably gonna be just little old me tonight though. Haven't seen a soul this whole time, whole day. One truck drove by this morning. Didn't hear any trucks at night, cars, whatever. Haven't seen anybody on the trails. It's been all mine. But I think this is it. Put a little hammock in between some of these trees. Figure out what I'm gonna do, get a game plan, get set up. All right, so here is my new one pound, roughly one pound, two ounce dream hammock. Love it, got a whole separate video on that. But right now, show you how we're gonna set this up real quick. Got some trees here behind me. Got my Dutch clips. You see, I got one with yellow, which means if I put it on my left-hand side, then it should open towards me. Kinda like to know that, because my hammock opens on one side. That's how I had it made. So uh, let's do this. First things first, let's get the straps out. I got 12 foot camo straps on here it came with 10 footers but uh, I just went with some 12 foots you can easily switch up depending on your trip pull these out and sit that down well, let me stuff that back in a little bit so I don't get it dirty okay now see I got my clips there I'm just going to go around the tree like so and we can do fine tuning later but let's just get the sucker up there all right see that and you want it along the side of the tree like that not out in front like this dutch will actually send you a little business card that specifically shows you how to set these up and they do recommend you have it on the side i'm sure that makes for a more even load and less Opportunity for failure. These straps are like 1,500 pounds rated, so we're good. So we got one side up. Now let's take the other side and do the same thing. Over here, go around the old tree. You can see I'm gonna have to take a lot of slack out of this first. There we go. See how easy that is though? Pull that slack out. Now I can actually unclip this real quick and make sure that I have it straight. Much better. And pull the slack out of the other side. Great. So you can see how quickly I got it roughly up. I got to balance it out and then get a little 30 degree angle on it roughly. Just by uh, letting a little slack out here. There we go. And then I can pull some more onto the other side. But that is roughly it. And... Uh, 
Yep, I was right. There's my opening right here. Hop in here, start lounging, and uh, I'm good to go. Not bad. Love it. As you saw in the full video, I can flip this back. I can sit in here and hang out, which I will be very soon. But right now, I'm just going to let a little more slack out of this side and try to balance this, this, this thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A couple minutes and complete relaxation is up and running love it all right well should probably get that tarp on next as much as i would love to keep sitting here let's get the old tarp out of the bag and here it is hammock gear kind of redundant i do have the stuff sack that came with it but it only weighs a quarter ounce holding it in its snakeskin sleeves which weigh a half ounce and then within that is the actual tarp which weighs under six ounces let's call it like five and three quarters add some lines and the whole tarps around eight ounces or so there it is lay that out and there you go you can see it is up now, normally you'd actually put the tarp up first, but I was a little excited about the hammock as well. But, and it's not like I'm getting rained on. But, throw that up. I can fine tune it a little bit. I did pay Adam uh, like an extra 10 bucks or something, and he gave me the 12 foot instead of the standard 11 foot. Um, so that was nice. It's got a little longer on it. I just, something I wanted. It's longer than I need. Um, and the skins, they kind of keep it up and out of the way. So I could chill here and it's not in my face. Get your sun and everything. And then when you're ready to go, similar to what you've seen when I had my Hennessy tarp, just pull them back. Same idea. Only you can see I have a plethora of uh, lines on there. These are the side pullouts. I did those in red. I just went crazy with the colors, didn't I? These are the corners. I did those in yellow. And then the ridge I did in gray. And there's our friend, the little wasp. I did go bananas and put a wasp on each line. Now you could just do uh, knots or line locks or whatever you want. But I went crazy and put Dutch bling on every line I could because I'm just out of my mind sometimes. Uh, in the pullouts, you know, we'll see how, uh, how it goes and how I use those. Um, I may or may not. They add a, just a tiny bit of line. All this line is zingit, which is very light. And so are the wasps. So it's not adding a lot to the total weight to keep those on there. And then uh, all I got to do is string out my corners. Try to get myself untangled there. String out my corners, you know. I can do porch mode if I want. I can go down tight. I mean, obviously, I went super high with the tarp right now just to get it up there so I can give everybody an example. But, you know, I could fine tune that down a little tighter and then it will uh, cut off the wind a little better. So we'll get this thing all nice and set up the way we want it. And uh, then it'll be time to relax. Take a closer look if we will, now that it's finally out. I went ahead and pitched it down on both sides. Uh, you, some of you who follow the channel might be a little confused right now as to why for once I didn't get something in camo because uh, hammock gear, this is the hammock gear hex Cuban tarp they make a really beautiful camo version and I tend to get everything in camo but I don't know why but for some reason for this one uh, I just went with regular the camo is slightly I mean slightly ultra gram counting slightly heavier per square yard than the regular for some reason I was just like you know if I'm paying 200 and something dollars for a tarp um, I just got really into making it as light as humanly possible. And also, the um, standard solid color there goes really well with the digital ACU camo. I mean, really well in my opinion. Of course, it doesn't matter a whole lot when you're like me and you mix and match like 37 different types of camo. I got multi there. I got woodland on the top quilt there by hammock gear as well and so is the bottom yeah i got all types of camo and then probably i guess it's technically woodland there but yeah i'm like a uh 
third world country resistance fighter, but uh, allied, of course. Uh, but now that we're in here, you see I got my little ridge line organizer. Like I said, this is a 40 degree top quilt, 40 degree under quilt. I can dial that in a little bit more. That should nest in there really well once I sit down, which is great. And then uh, have a couple drip lines, which is just more zing it. I actually forgot to do this at home, but I always carry a little extra line. I just fashioned these um, up. Just a little lark's head zing it coming down there. Thanks, uh, Derek at Ultimate Hang for making that really cool video that brought my attention to uh, getting dripped on because I would have thought hey this buckle will probably be a good break but he did a video that was really cool uh, that showed that this can fail send water off the tree down the line skip over this quite possibly and then come down here but uh, I saw his testing with little lines like this and it worked fine so the water should if it makes it past this hit this and drip down so that's awesome snake skins out of the way and there you see the uh, pull lats I'm not using, but what would happen is, um, especially if I had, I have this pitch kind of high, um, but if I had it real low to the ground, and then if I use the pull outs, you can see I could really pull it out like that and give myself even more room inside. This might be fun to experiment with if I use this tarp for uh, like a ground dwelling, like say winter, if I just slept right on the, on the snow, on a pad and everything, but whole nother story. Uh, lines are pitched out right there just been doing some adjusting with the wasps so I'm pretty good um, gear over here I'll probably do a video eventually but this is all this pack is pretty much all of my um, it's my ribs front pack it's pretty much all my camera gear but um, you can see my GoPro's charging right there got my top layer shirt this is my pack cover from Dutch wear gear it's like 1.75 ounces it's awesome um, I've always used Ziplocs for like a couple years. I finally am experimenting with doing, uh, these are like 10 bucks a piece, the Sea to Summit stuff sacks. Now, <laughs> gallon Ziploc bag is like 0.3 ounces, and these are like 0.4 and 0.6 ounces respectively, and um, I've managed to fit all my stuff in them, so, you know just another option but they are a lot more durable um, I have all my snacks actually all my food except for dinners is packed into this one pack here it weighs a ton but it's all right in there a little bear line here for hanging my food up uh, because this is bear sanctuary unlike Dolly Sods to the north where there is uh, bear hunting and people do go there and bear hunt this is bear sanctuary and by all accounts there are bears here so Hanging the food up is much more important here than um, some of the other trips I've done. This right here is just like 25 feet of zingit, a uh, little S beaner, as well as a larger beaner. And it is, I don't know, one and three quarters ounce or something like that. You can hook that up to a garbage bag that goes around your whole pack or even just suspend your whole food bag if it's in sill nylon like that. But either way, cranberry wilderness, want to get that food off the ground. Cook set is in there. We've seen that before. Or if you haven't, you know, check out my previous videos. Uh, stuff sack here is my uh, backup clothes. And there's my Montbell jacket for tomorrow morning because this morning was cold when I woke up in that car. Whew, it was cold, so I'm going to probably need that. And then, of course, there's my Osprey 46 pack. And stuff sacks for my under and top quilts. Sent my wife a message that this is where I'm camping for tonight. And, uh... Now all I got to do is hang out and go through the stress of figuring out which dinner to have. Hmm. Tough life right now. Real tough. Alright, well now that that's all set up, I'm thinking final decision for tonight. Going beef stroganoff with noodles. I have not tried that yet. It's by Mountain House. It's one of their full size ones. As in, like, supposedly serves two and a half people. But uh, I got one of the lower calorie ones. Uh, so, it should be a decent amount, considering the miles I put in today. So we'll do that. Again, we got the Esbit stove. This is a Vargo windscreen. Just go over this real quick. We got a fresh Esbit cube next to the burnout stuff. It, uh, as you saw earlier... It blows out really easily. You just 
blow on it. Unlike uh, alcohol, you wouldn't want to uh, do that. It would spray all over the place. But with the uh, Esbit, I can just blow it out afterwards, and then I just put the lid back on. All this is is a mint tin kind of setup. It's actually air pellets were in here, but like a mint tin, and I used the bottom as a base to lift it up a little bit, and then it's kind of self-contained, keeps all the used fuel nice and clean and out of the way. I'll strike that up with a nice long burning match, which is just one of those longer wood matches. Just cut off a corner of the box that those came in. We'll supply those. Back up, always like three fire sources, so I have a flint and steel here. I have uh, over there a lighter, and I do have some tin foil that's always useful. And here's a little rehydrator, insulating thing. And yeah, I already got my water in here. This is a 750 mil Tokes titanium pot, so for around mm, close to four ounces, three point something with the lid, you can fit up to three cups in there. I only need two cups. Got my quarter ounce uh, spork here from Sea to Summit. And my water bottles, as usual, just disposable. Uh, one and a half liter, because I know the water sources around here were going to be a little sketchy, although I ended up camping right next to it, which is awesome. But I have the capability to carry uh, plenty of water, wrap a little duct tape around there, just in case anything happens to need repair. I can peel that back off of there, and uh, it just makes a good place to store my duct tape, if you're wondering why that's there. But anyway... Well, you know, they call this Hell for Certain Branch. I'm thinking a better name would probably be Hell for Certain is Frozen Over because I am actually <laughs> going to try to make a fire, which uh, anybody who follows the channel knows that I have little patience for. But uh, Mike usually handles that, and when I go by myself, well, eh, usually just me and my stove. Although, now that I mention it, a good uh, little good secondary thing about carrying Esbit cubes is that uh, well I'll probably cut one in half and make a little fire starter this guy's not rubbing two sticks together uh, <laughs> but we'll give it a shot I mean what else do I have to do it's only uh, 630 I've been here a couple if not a few hours uh, so just kind of entertaining myself haven't even started dinner yet so figure might as well at least uh, do something so I've been sorting my wood by size, all the way from kindling to slightly bigger, medium, schmedium, all the way up to the bigger ones, no bigger than wrist size, and uh, keeping it organized. And if I don't get a fire going, well, somebody else will have plenty of wood already waiting for him to go. Little TP action, and you know, this probably won't work, but whatever. At least it kept me occupied for a little while. Put that match in there, let it burn, see what happens. That's about a half cube of Esbit. I just took the partial out of my cook kit and filled it with uh, two new ones. So we'll let this get cranking and then slowly feed it with little stuff like this and uh, see if my TP works. I don't know. No television out here, so gotta do something. Would you look at that? Got a little something going on. Just got to feed that base, I think. Work with me. Give me a little something to stare at tonight.
Ah. Good morning, everyone. I'll tell you, you haven't lived until you put yourself on camera within uh, 10 minutes of waking up. It was a great night. Got a good rest. It's about 7 o'clock now. And uh, just convincing myself to get out of the old hammock here. It was chilly last night. I know that because I got out to uh, do a little bathroom break around, I don't even know what time it was. Midnight, 12.30 or something like that. It was cold. Cold out there. Somewhere in the 40s, I imagine. Um, but this thing is nice and snug. Somebody asked the other day how the uh, hammock gear incubator goes around and matches up with the dream hammock. Well, it's great, actually. Get that out of my way. It uh, they pair up quite well, as expected, because um, the underquilt is adjustable and everything. So that worked really well. wasn't cold at all. Completely secure in here and toasty. And you know, another thing. Uh, hopefully, is coming across on film there. Another reason that I like this solid color or just standard green color Cuban tarp is that um, it's actually see-through and a lot of guys or I should say some guys don't like that um, and the camo I think actually blocks that out a little bit better um, but I kind of thought it was cool you can see through it see some stars through it get a little uh, light through it in the morning to help wake you up now on the flip side I've heard some guys say that um, that can have kind of a greenhouse effect and you end up baking in here but that would be if I hung around till the sun's up and I'm probably not I'm usually setting up in the afternoon getting in to go to sleep and then waking up and rolling out so shouldn't really be a problem for me uh, with heat and I kind of like that you can see through it so that's kind of cool uh, but I should probably see what the world looks like whoops with it out of my way so it's time to get out of this hammock <sighs> let's take a little uh, morning walk to get some water a little morning stretch the uh, of course the water is flowing right past us over there that we crossed to get here but over here last night I was just taking a little walk around I actually went all the way up this ridge to see if I could see anything just kind of entertaining myself, but I did find kind of a cool spot over here. A little waterfall, or a trickle of a waterfall. So, I think I'll tag this as an alternate water source on my GPS as well. I'll just hop down there and fill up right out of the faucet there. Drop that back off at camp. And go over here and grab the bear bag what I actually used for my bear bag this time a lot of times I use just a garbage bag or something because I'm cheap and it's lightweight but I decided to try going dual purpose for this time and it's actually my pack cover it's my uh, Dutchware gear little pack cover these things are great by the way 20 bucks and it weighs less than the Sea to Summit uh, pack covers it's basically his argon material. Same stuff that my um, top quilt is made of. Same pattern, same material and everything. Only it's um, been impregnated with silicone. So it's waterproof. And then I just kind of ran my line around it. Just kind of, you know, gathered up the ends. And there's all my goodies inside. So, pack cover slash bear bag. Nice. All right, getting a little breakfast going for today. It's really starting to become a favorite of mine. Just uh, did this on the Grafton Loop Trail my wife and I did. It was actually uh, her idea. But two packs of instant oatmeal, teaspoon of milk, powdered milk, and you throw it in a little bag. You know, there's plenty of Mountain House and uh, Backpacker Pantry breakfast items out there. But this you probably already got laying around in your cupboard, and uh, you can make that pretty easily. And then I just dump a little hot water in there, which hopefully is cranking along. 
and yeah, we're getting somewhere uh, probably around three cups in there this will only take less than a cup so I'll just dump a little bit of that off into my breakfast use the rest for some coffee which I already have my little condiment and coffee pack here got some hot sauce for dinner tonight got a couple different flavors of instant coffee and some Splenda packets that are pretty much weightless to sweeten things up and have a nice little breakfast very cool got my stuff laid out um, you know there's my master bag of uh, snacks and food I just took out what I needed for today some snack options there may not eat at all but get those and I carry those up front in my front pack which will balance the load out first and foremost so get some of that weight off my back and onto the front and then also it's right there no taking a pack off I can just eat and go I find I'm keeping myself more energized by having my food readily available instead of going and going and going and then crashing stopping stuffing my face I just go for a more even just constant snacks throughout the day and I seem to be able to pack on um, a little bit better mileage and less fatigue that way and then we'll get uh, this guy packed up I'll just show you real quick I did uh, I said I wasn't gonna maybe do it but I said that before having about three hours to sit around by myself so I started experimenting with the pullouts and just ran a line right to the ground I was originally picturing you know you could get some angles up to like if you had branches around and stuff but just going down to the ground you still get a nice little pullout you know, it seems like a little, but it adds up to a lot in practice, I feel. When I'm in there, it just gives me a little extra, see that tiny little pull there? A little extra headroom in here for getting in and out of the hammock, airflow, etc. And uh, that worked out pretty nice. So, I like that. I will point something out, and this was my choice, to put the red guy line on there, which you probably can barely see, right? And that's my point. It's great for color coding. I like the red color. Look at the difference in visibility between the yellow and the red, especially against these fall colors. But the uh, red, I was avoiding tripping over a lot more. That's why I put all this crap here. The yellow, a lot more high vi visibility. So may eventually just go to yellow on all the tie outs, but I do kind of like the cool red for now. So we'll see how that goes. All right, well, I'm gonna get over here and tend to my breakfast and then get packed up get back on this trail see what happens all right we are back on the trail and Got some fresh leaves on the ground from last night. Got a little wind coming through today. Possible thunderstorms in the afternoon. At least this is all data that I got uh, two days ago before I came down. I've been completely cut off since. So assuming the forecast hasn't changed, that's what's going to happen. Uh, we're actually right now backtracking on Middle Fork Trail the way we came last night. And we're going to make our way back down here get towards the junction, make some decisions. It's about 10 o'clock. Really just kind of chilled out at camp, had a great morning, had my oatmeal, my coffee, explored around a little bit. And uh, I think today's gonna be a pretty laid back day. Definitely not doing the miles I did yesterday. This time I actually mean it. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll, we'll look at some options to uh, minimize the miles today and maximize the uh, hanging out, just soaking things in. All right, well, we met up at the junction for Big Beachy. Hang a right on that. And uh, suddenly we're off of that kind of logging road feel and onto a nice, <laughs> little more constricted ridge line trail and gaining some elevation, which we've been losing the whole way on that logging path, uh, middle fork there. But, a little more of a traditional trail some roots rocks mostly roots you can see on my map here we started at the car here yesterday we went up along here hung that right on Laurelie branch and then right around where I had this question mark 
about a possible camping and this other possible camping I think we were right in between there so we were just about in between the two spots I guess maybe we would be okay for camping we backtracked came down now this is the junction that we just hit big beachy going up here so we'll take this back towards the car camp somewhere in here and then back on the last day we'll do this stretch and hopefully get back to the car it's about 11 11 40 and about four miles in so pretty soon I'd like to find a little spot for some lunch I got some uh, Lipton noodles that I dumped in a bag. Very similar method to how I did the oatmeal this morning, so I'm gonna try that out. You can tell by the wind whipping through here that we're definitely up on top of the ridge. Can't really tell that too much visually because we're still treed in. Um, but there's a nice breeze and a lot of wind. And there's probably a little bit of that pressure front that's supposed to come through this afternoon. But uh, yeah, I think this is probably about as high as it goes. Just can't really see out there much. You can hear that wind continuing to whip, or hopefully you can hear me at all. Uh, but I found a little fire ring here on the side of the trail, using it as a little bit of a windbreak to get uh, some water going for my Lipton noodles and sauce. Uh, wasn't smart enough to write down how much water to use, so uh, we're just gonna play that by ear. Just a real small site. This one is probably big enough for one tent right on the trail um, as I go along and I GPS tag all this stuff um, I've been trying to put little notes just real short little notes like medium small large uh, hammock or tent or both um, or in the case of this one I you know made a note that it's right on the trail um, which they don't really suggest you do and you probably wouldn't want people walking right by anyway but um, I am I am trying to put those little notes on those GPS tags for those of you that want to come out here and try this area yourself Back on the trail here. Had a couple minutes where it was sprinkling a little bit. The skies were a bit darker. It's brightening up now, which is nice. But it's definitely looking like it was gonna rain and then it started a little bit. So I got the old pack cover on. It seems to be holding off now though. But I sure would like to uh, get somewhere and get set up. I just don't feel like getting rained on. It's happened the last couple if not a few trips I haven't had a dry trip in a while so we'll see what happens oh and for those of you who may be asking how the Lipton <laughs> noodles and sauce worked out back there uh, probably can't tell you at least not uh, realistically I added way too much water I ended up with like a thinly flavored noodle soup so, tough to tell if, uh, if it was because I added too much water that it was a little rough, or if it just doesn't work that well. Of course, you're supposed to add milk and butter to that stuff too, so. Anyway, that was my so-so lunch. We'll have to redeem ourselves at dinner. Oh, all right. District line trail intersection here on Big Beachy, which means that we are, focus there, right there. See the intersection of District Line where my camera's centered on right there? And the car is right over there, so we're right where we want to be. Starting to sprinkle rain again. Yeah, wanna, wanna find a campsite this time. We've made fine mileage, around seven or eight miles and our return to the car tomorrow shouldn't be more than uh, five-ish or something like that. I got enough water that if I'm responsible, I can get things done. Uh, you know, ideally, I'd have a little more, but tomorrow's breakfast, probably just gonna go snacks and uh, hit the trail. No oatmeal or anything like that, I'm thinking, so won't need water for that in the morning. Just need drinking water, tonight's dinner, teeth brushing, stuff like that. So if we don't have water, not the end of the world. Time to start scouting for a little home for tonight. Almost took a small tent site that I just came across, but there's a little too much wind blowing through it for my tastes. Uh, at least with the potential of a storm or rain coming through, probably wouldn't have been the smartest 
idea. So I did reluctantly pass that up. But we're just gonna keep moving and hope for the best. See, we're going through a pretty cool little tree tunnel here. Not bad. Just switched into this from the uh, pine trees back there. So maybe up here I can get something with a little bit more coverage than back there. Bingo, I think we may have found it. Right over here. Wow, this is a good one for tents too. Not that I'll be worrying about such things. What am I, some sort of animal? You think I'm gonna sleep on the ground, do you? Little fire pit. Pretty conservative, not too out of hand, size-wise. Little wind block over here with these rocks. I think this will do it. And it's not quite raining yet. So we better hurry up and get a little tarp action going. Well, here we are, just in the nick of time, under the old tarp, or the new tarp, in the new hammock, and I haven't even put my quilt underneath or anything yet. Just really uh, relaxing and relishing in the fact that I beat this rain. Finally got a dry trip. Uh, pretty, pretty roomy in here. Uh, tarp is eight and a half by 12. I think I mentioned the length before, but it is eight and a half width. But with the pull outs, you get a little more headspace, like I said. Um, and I actually lucked out, I have a tree over there, kind of giving me some room in the front. So uh, I can move around a little bit, but closer to bedtime, I will actually pitch this down a little tighter, because obviously I'm getting some wind coming at me here. It'll be hitting the bottom of my hammock. I don't need all that tonight. You can see I'm pitched tighter in the back there. That's probably how I'm going to have the uh, front be as well once it's actually time to go to sleep. But for now, hanging out, I'm doing pretty good. Everything is ready to go. So get some dinner going, get my quilt set up, do some lounging. Be happy that I'm dry. A cold and windy day three begins. Morning, everybody. It's, uh, I don't know, a little after seven or something like that. Had a good dinner last night. Started pouring. Just raining pretty good on and off for a while while I was making dinner and hanging out and then uh, pouring all night and high winds. You know, I skipped that one site because I could feel wind really rushing through there and thought this one, <laughs> thought this one would be uh, better and perhaps it was but still got a lot of wind through here and uh, I did see some reports before I left home saying that <sighs> the temp in town on this particular last on this last day uh, the low could be 37 degrees for that night uh, and I'm thinking the way it felt last night, there's a good chance we did crack the 30s. Um, was probably pushing the limits of my 40 degree top quilt here. Now granted, I was in a t-shirt. Um, and with the wind, oh, I rained. with the wind coming through, um, I woke up pretty cold and actually put on my down jacket here. Now granted, another thing to point out is I probably should have chose a configuration or altered my configuration so that the tarp was lower around me um, but that's just my laziness once I had it set up it started raining pretty hard and I just didn't feel like touching it again yeah it's about how my night went as you can see I'm kind of huddled underneath it here now it is freezing out here uh, I did notice though while packing away my underquilt, I just had it vented way too much. Um, the night before I had it real tight and then last night for whatever reason I was like ah, I can loosen this a little bit maybe it'll make it fit better. Should have just left it alone because 
I was getting airflow in there, I'm sure. When I got out and actually got a look at it, even after my adjustments last night, it still looked too loose. So I was probably getting a lot of cold air going under there. It didn't have to. But anyway, right now I'm just, uh, like I said, trying to do my best um, to pack up from underneath of here. Got my pack hanging right off the line, which is nice and convenient. And um, I can just stuff my stuff into it as I go. And then over here, I don't think it's raining right now. Um, way in the distance is my bear bag down there. Last night, um, <laughs> kind of easy when you get down to this point where you have very minimal food left. I have some extra snacks, my trash, and my breakfast. Um, <laughs> I just took that uh, snack bag I had. It's made out of sill nylon, so it shouldn't be a problem and just hoisted the whole thing up there. Made things nice and easy. So maybe I need myself a nice Pop-Tart to get warmed up. <laughs> a nice cold Pop-Tart to get warmed up, that is. Oh man, it is brutally cold out here. Fingertips, can barely feel them. I'd be interested to go home and find out how cold it actually was, but in town of course it's colder up here but it is whoo, chilly uh so get the old windbreaker on here it's actually a dry ducks rain suit but um gets the job done and only weighs around four and a half ounces or something like that but whew, hopefully hit the trail start moving start warming up so that's what i'm really looking forward to do is just uh breaking down and getting on the trail so I can get warmed up, back to that car, get a little lunch action, maybe a little burger. Yeah, no, that sort of thing. Well, we are back on the trail, and let me tell you, there's nothing quite like going through some nice, dense foliage after a night of rain, just to get you soaked again, even though it's not actively raining. Uh, but that's what nice, synthetic, quick-dry hiking pants are for, I guess. Keep moving and you will dry eventually, right? Or, in my case, I'll be uh, back at the car switching into some comfortable clothes. <laughs> Hopefully. It doesn't look like we're doing a lot of miles today. I just checked my GPS and we got ourselves pretty close to the car yesterday. Um, actually, we were right before you start dropping down and losing elevation. Down into the more deciduous looking trees, a little bit more like you'd expect in West Virginia. Whereas up there, it's like you're in Canada. Uh, pretty cool. I love all that moss. I'd say for sure my favorite trail is this uh, big beachy trail. I'd say if you're going to come down here and do a shorter hike, bring some friends, some fun food. From what I've seen, you don't have to do a ton of miles down here. Oh boy, there's some mud. Um, you don't have to do a ton of miles. It's not like other places where you got a, you know, a bunch of different vistas and focal points that are spread out because obviously they're not next to each other, so you do these long hikes so you can hit each one. But here, it seems that uh, in the Cranberry Wilderness, the focal point is the trail itself. So I'd say you pick one good kind of along the river trail, one good ridge trail, one connecting trail, boom, you got yourself a loop. No need to kill yourself. Just come out and enjoy it. Oh man, what we got here? Feels like it's open and, wow. That's really cool. Nice opening there. I mean, I say that because I have been in Canopy for days now. And this is the first time I've seen open sky like this in a long time. This is actually what I was picturing when I said I would love to have a spot where you could see the stars. I had never really had an opportunity. Yesterday was clouded over the day before. And there's still a decent amount of trees. 
but this would be really nice unfortunately there's this dense vegetation so it doesn't look like you could get a tent out there maybe on the other side or something I will go ahead and tag this I'll just call it stargazing field on the uh, GPS but that's a nice view there the leaves turning if only we could get some sunshine in the mix. <laughs> uh, that's hail, by the way, bouncing off of the top of my camera right now. And my head. Yeah, hail. Just never fails. Can't get away from it, can I? The old inclement weather. You know, I said I'd go down south for one more warm weather or at least warmer weather trip before snow season kicks in. And I <sighs> guess I didn't go quite far enough south, did I? And now we got snow. So somebody uh, must have got the message that I was coming. And they just pulled out all the stops. Actually makes for a great end to the trip, though. I do love seeing all these different types of weather and environment. Well, that looks familiar. Here it is, where we started, that original junction. We went straight up there, but now we're back, which means the car should be, it better be, right down this way. So we've just about brought this to a conclusion. It's been a great time, uh, great scenery. Had a lot of fun testing out my new uh, gear setup. I'm really thinking this is probably kind of locked in. I really got things the way I want it. I'm really happy with my current setup. It's a, it's evolved for a while now, um, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'm very happy with it, actually. So, once again, uh, if you want to grab any of the GPS data for download, check out all the waypoints, uh, hit that up at uh, my website, Syntax77.com. You can download that over there. I'll throw my uh, gear list up there as well, so you can check that out if you are so inclined and there will be a separate video on that too because people do seem to enjoy that so i will try to throw that together and link it for you and now i guess it's time to start thinking about where i want to have my lunch at i see a glint of silver vw over there yep all right i think we're bringing this one to an official close very successfully too, I might add. So now all we gotta do is get uh, geared up for that seven and a half hour drive home or whatever it's gonna be, but not until I get something to eat, because I am hungry and it's right around lunchtime. So there you have it. Mission complete, Cranberry Wilderness, Monongahela National Forest here in West Virginia. Had a great time, great sights, scenery, cool weather. Can't ask for much more than that. Do appreciate you coming along and joining me for the adventure. Until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time.